Good morning. Good morning. I hear a lot of talking, so that's good. That means networking and money's being made. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad everybody could come out today. If you look at your partner, either to your left or to your right, they have something that's different. Uh, so on unsuccessful, they don't know what they want to be. Sometimes we think of uh, uh, multiple things to do instead of concentrating on one, uh, one task, one idea. So you think of multiple things that you can try to do, but you're spreading yourself out pretty thin. So you need to rein in your focus. Some other traits of unsuccessful people, they fly by the seats of their pants. So I mean, that, that could mean a couple of things. That could mean that you're spontaneous doesn't necessarily mean that you're unsuccessful. So just looking at both of these particular lists, we tend to fall somewhere in between, in the middle. And we take different traits from each side. So uh, uh, within there, you have to kind of find your balance and the individual that you want to strive to be. Uh, today's series, today, we're going to talk about uh, actual business plan. So how many people have started a business plan in here? All right, I see a couple hands. And what Keisha will go over today is some vital information within your business plan that you will need uh, for one, either seeking financing, for moving your business forward. Uh, it will just be some vital information. So I would implore you to take this opportunity, one. Uh, there's some tablets that are down on your on your table, you can take the opportunity to write down any questions that you have. Uh, I would just refrain from asking them until she's completed her presentation or, or just allows you an opportunity to kind of talk uh, and discuss. And there will be plenty of opportunities to do that. I want to uh, start with some of the people that helped me put this workshop together and, and are helping facilitate the uh, workshop as well. Yeah, Good morning. Uh, my name is Keisha Sturdivant. I am a business consultant for Cookstown University, and I will be presenting uh, business planning in a nutshell. Once again, really thrilled to be here this morning and uh, looking forward to a lot of interaction, a lot of questions as we go through the business plan. So, welcome and uh, good morning. Thank you. So Keisha is one of my colleagues at the Small Business Development Center. I sent her an email yesterday following up about today's session. We offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting. However, none of us can do the business plan for you. This is your dream. We want to know what pieces make sense to you. What goals do you have? Do you want to work from home, work part-time? Do you want to have a staff of 50 people? Do you want to have a brick and mortar as a service business? We like to look at the pieces on your business plan, just a draft, and then when we sit down with you, try and figure out how to help you get there. Um, we're lucky to partner with the City of Harrisburg and First National Bank um, to do these events, and you'll get an email from me following up with Keisha's material on Monday, and then let us know, reply to that email as to what steps you're working on, or if you want to meet with one of us. Nice. Uh, Good, good morning, everyone. My name is Solomon Wheeler. I'm the branch manager for the U.S. Small Business Administration. We you know, help provide funding to resource partners throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And we also you know, thank our wonderful banking partners that help execute our program and push money out to folks like yourself uh, so that you can start your businesses. But I'm just here as a resource today. Back here, if anyone has any questions. <laughs> yes, I should mention just make sure that you pick up a resource guide. This kind of details all of the resource organizations that are available to you. And oh, by the way, most of them are either free or very low cost. So thank you. Uh, Lewis. Lewis Motley, uh, Vice President of SBA, uh, Business Development Officer at First National Bank. Uh, I'm here. I mean, I can't really say enough about the, this group here of everyone that's here to promote the knowledge. Please utilize us. All our contact information is in the folder, I believe, that everyone received. Uh, if you have questions, follow up, because this is going to be get a lot today. So, um, you know, you're going to get management, financial, marketing, all this stuff to develop your, your uh, business plan. So just make sure you use us, and if you have any questions, all of us are great resources. 
Yeah, so again, with, with these workshops I've designed, uh, moving forward, I want to try to keep them free and uh, just incorporate different facets of business. And hopefully here within the next couple months, we'll have some additional topics uh, for people to register and participate in. Once again, good morning, um, and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules, um, you know, just to find out, you know, more about, of course, you know, the city of Harrisburg, um, but also learning about, um, you know, business opportunities. So it sounds like we have some startups, then we also have some um, individuals that are currently in business today, and they're looking to kind of take the business to the next level. Um, I think I'm going to call this session uh, Treats and Sweets because uh, I pass around the lollipops and now we have the cupcakes in the back. And I see you have a really cool um, t-shirt. Yes. Um, take that jacket off. Let us see that t-shirt, right? Uh, so, oh, uh, really? Perfect timing, right? <laughs> that is so awesome. So how did you come up with the name? Cake Slingers Cafe? Yes. Um, well, Cake Slingers came to me a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was walking Yes, pass those around. Is yeah. that okay for you to do the app it just popped sure. into my head, and I thought it was going to be a, um, a Western, a, uh, a bakery for a boy, baby and boys bakery, because it's cake slingers. Mm -hmm. So I thought, but it's actually cake slingers, like you're throwing something across the room. There's a whole story behind the name Cake Slingers Cafe. It's about, uh, well, this is my cartoon character. Her name is Babette, and she's from Utopia. And Utopia is a place where they train the best chefs. And everybody who's at the top of their game goes there. She was actually hijacked when she was on her way to her parents. Uh, she was hijacked by a ninja stork. They gave them a teddy bear because they weren't expecting her. And the stork took her to Utopia. And she grew up learning how to do the best uh, in her class. So um, when she finishes, she graduates. She gets an assignment. And her assignment is to go work with these two fellas and their bakery. She thought she was going to a restaurant. In the food world, restaurant um, cooks and bakers are two different worlds. Even though it's all food, it's two different two different entities. And they don't cross. Well, when she gets to the bakery, which she thought she was going to the restaurant, she's thinking, this is a, this is a problem. I'm not supposed to be here. But she goes inside, and there's two old chaps who used to be baseball players. And they're, you know, they're, they're in the process of baking something. So the guy needs a cup of sugar. So he's like, hey, I need a cup of sugar. So the other guy takes it and pitches it. Because one used to be a pitcher and the other one was a catcher. So he pitches the cup of sugar across the room. You know, he catches it. I need some strawberries. Well, the strawberries don't make it, so you got to pile strawberries on the wall. you got a bunch of food on the wall, because sometimes they eat it, sometimes they miss it. So she comes in, and her whole, the whole crux behind her story is she helps them pull it together, the bakery and the restaurant. And that's where I come in, because I have a bakery and a restaurant together. And she's the focal point for the mascot of my, my entity and you know, the little story. the rest of you were, but I was there, okay? Because, you know, as soon as you, you know, you mentioned the name, you talked about the character, you gave the story, it's really important um, as a business owner to have a story behind your business. What made you start your business? What is your logo? Um, how are you going to promote it? Um, but yeah, I can see a whole series on that. So um, very good. Thank you for sharing. And then thank you for bringing in the treats. Um, one of the things that we talk about um, as, you know, we are working with our clients as far as getting their packages ready um, to go to the bank, right? To go to First National, right? Um, is to make sure that you have everything in place, right? You have your business plan, you have your financials. Um, if you have the cupcakes, bring the cupcakes in, right? Bring it to your, your lender. I'm sure you're, you're happy to see, right? Okay, so I'll take some time, right? I'll take some time. So it's really important to connect with um, your lender, your angel investors, um, your customers, um, but not just to connect with them, to stay connected to make sure that your target audience is what you're looking for. And I'll go through that in a few minutes of kind of looking at the demographics, the, you know, of course, the age, the salary, 
things like that, just to make sure um, that you're staying focused on your true mission and your vision of your organization. So without further ado, um, I did taste a little bit of that cupcake, very good. Um, I got to stay focused. So business planning in a nutshell, we're gonna look at four components. We're gonna look at management, we're going to look at the concept, the financials, and the marketing. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to share with you is um, there's quite a few items that the Small Business Development Center has to offer. Um, I mean, these are just a few, and we have great partners, um, you know, the SBA, uh, SCORE, uh, just a lot of different resources in the room here today. Um, but we help as far as either social media strategy, um, financial templates um, and assumptions to help you pull those numbers together so it's appealing you know to the bankers the VPs of the <coughs> banking world um, that it makes sense we help you with your pitch and then your plan so as far as the pitch it's really 10 slides and it's an introduction to who you are um, what is your mission of your business who is your target audience who's your competition um, what is your overall marketing strategy? Kind of going through identifying all of those moving parts as far as the inner workings of your business. Um, we do a lot of market research. We partner with the University of Texas. Uh, so they will help gather information based on what you're looking for. Um, the business model canvas, I'm gonna grab this really quick. Um, we have a really, really big business model canvas here. Um, that I work with our entrepreneurs to help them to flush out all of the ideas. It's like a brainstorming activity where you look at, for example, uh, the value proposition. What makes you different? What is the secret ingredient you know, in the cupcake? Um, what's the secret ingredient to your hamburgers or whatever business that you're trying to launch? I like to call it the secret sauce. So really, what is that secret that you have, right? KFC has a secret, right? Um, but as you know, um, that's really what's behind your business. You want to keep that um, as like a trade secret um, because, of course, you don't want your competition to be all over that, right? So it's really important to make sure um, that you're focusing on what your value is and always going back to it to make sure, you know, that you're staying true to who you are as a company. Uh, the other piece in here is looking at the key activities, the key partners. I mentioned um, your competition. So what we'll do is go through this a little bit later. I do have a slide. I just wanted to share this with you um, because normally when I do my eight-week course, um, I give homework. So after um, the first session, uh, students are required to fill in the blanks with the post-it notes and uh, just brainstorm. No answer is right or wrong, uh, but just really getting those ideas out and uh, um, attaching them to the different uh, parts to your business model canvas. And then the other pieces are uh, selling to the government. Um, uh, we have, uh, Lori is a great resource um, at the um, Small Business Development Center that helps in that area. Um, and we, of course, have a lot of other uh, resources as well. And then international business, uh, we have Marty Brill. I was just at the chamber earlier, um, but he helps in that area. So, you know, you talk about your packaging, right? So here's the lollipop. Am I going to package this lollipop here in the U.S., or does it make more sense for me to increase my margin, you know, when I sell this lollipop? And I'm just using this as an example. Um, but those are the things that you need to keep in mind when you talk about, you know, um, packaging your items internationally or here in the United States. So again, the pitch, the plan, business planning in a nutshell, as well as the business canvas. So that's really the agenda. Um, so I mentioned earlier about the pitch. Uh, so basically, the pitch um, was developed by Guy Kawasaki. And um, again, he um, really carved out the basic steps, the 10 slides with the pitch, and then moving over to the actual business plan. Bankers don't have time to look at a thick, hopefully this isn't your business plan, a thick business plan like this, right? It's not, tell me it's not. Uh, so the point is, they don't have time to look at this. They wanna see your financials, they wanna see a kind of a simple overview of your business plan, um, of course, the money is key to it, but really understanding the dynamics of your business and how you're going to run it um, on a daily basis. 
So Guy really goes through and shares a lot of information as far as how to structure that into a complete um, business plan. Yes. Is there, uh, is there a time frame when you're going to pitch that you want to be able to do? Very good question. Thank you for asking that question. Um, so there really isn't a set time frame, but has anyone seen um, the show um, Entrepreneur Elevator Pitch? Have any of you seen that? You've seen that, right? Uh, well, I, How I know long? what you're talking about, right? It's, yes. It's like the 30 second or 60 second commercial. They're in that elevator, yeah. and they have to pitch to the potential investors within it's less than two minutes. So you need to have your elevator pitch, um, your, your pitch ready to go, you know, when you're meeting with someone. Or you're in the elevator with Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, right? He doesn't have time to hear, and you know how how he can be. Uh, so make sure that you have that elevator pitch um, to the point. Um, I like to incorporate numbers, and I'll give you an example. Uh, so let's say you know I'm looking for to start my business, um, and I need two hundred thousand dollars. And what I'm going to do is use that two hundred thousand dollars for um, only ten thousand for marketing, uh, twenty five thousand for um, you know materials. Um, and then, of course, looking at all the different parts of the business, breaking it down into numbers. And then also talk about the time frame. I'm looking to launch within six months. Um, this is short term, and then my long term goal is to, you know, open up another division. But be very concise as far as how you're going to deliver and open up and run your business. Is that yes. Okay. Short and sweet. Okay. You don't want to uh, belabor. And also, make sure you have a story, right? Uh, cake slingers, right? Great story. In my mind, it's like, okay, I can see that. I can see that vision. Um, I can see the character. I can see the logo. Customers need to be able to make the connection with what you're trying to sell them, what service that you're trying to offer them. They need to be able to make that connection. And again, it has to be ongoing. Yes, Charles? I know a lot of times, in, uh, especially in the construction field, they call it capability statements. Walk around with the capability statement and it kind of speaks to your company, it gives an overview of your company, uh, particularly how you started, or maybe some of the uh, products and services that you provide. Um, usually, those sheets you can utilize um, for any type of uh, business that you're doing. And it kind of helps you uh, get your pitch down a lot quicker because you're identifying everything on, on one sheet. Yes, thank you for saying that. And speaking of the capability, I'll get to you in a minute. We'll actually have oh, a sample ahead. template for the capability statement okay, that perfect. we use in government contracting, and I'll send that to everyone on That's Monday, perfect. and I'll copy Charlie, and I think he's over to see this. But someone should understand what you're doing in 30 seconds or less. It should be like your 12-year-old niece or your male person, like someone who knows nothing about you, right? So you have to get your message. That's all the time you have, right, Keisha? Yes. 30 seconds. Yes. Or in this case, an hour that you want to finish. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate it. And again, this is an open forum. Um, this is your forum. So, yeah, so you have a question? Uh, yeah, no, I just want to add on to what you Please. said about the bankers and what yeah. we look at it first. But I'm, this is what I do. First thing I do is I look at the financials and I start asking you questions. If you understand those financials and how much money it's going to take for you to live monthly, with all your operating expenses, uh, what is it going to take for you to ramp your ramp up period? Um, you know, all these questions I'm going to ask too. So. That's the first thing. So everything in the front, I'm already figuring out if you have experience. But if you know your numbers, it's very important for me. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you all for your comments. And again, think about Shark Tank. I mean, if you have ever, has everyone seen Shark Tank? You all have. Raise your hand. Come on now. Interactive. Good, good, good. Um, so as you can tell, right, when you look at Shark Tank and you listen, you know, again, with the stories that they're telling, telling how they're going to run their business, uh, talk about the numbers. It's like, oh, your, your evaluation doesn't make sense. You know, so you really need to make sure you understand, you know, if this product, um, geez, I need a product. Let's just say this book, right? Uh, so for this book, uh, for the Small Business um, Association, um, give me a retail price. How much do you think it would cost for one of these? And it is free. I'm just trying to use it as ten dollars. Okay, so we have ten dollars up here. Another fig, another amount, any no. amount, a dollar. Okay, a dollar. Wow. Okay. Uh, so the question is, how much does it cost to actually make the book? All right. So if we say, let's just go with $10. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. just, okay, okay. 
Right. So question. Right. So let's say it costs four dollars to make it. So what is your margin there? Six dollars, right? So you have to keep that in the back of your mind. But of course, if you're going to do in bulk, you know, it's going to be cheaper, things like that. So you have to keep those figures, those um, factors in mind, you know, as you're about to launch your business. Um, of course, that's just really key. And again, the bankers are looking for that information. So we talked about the pitch. I'm going to move on to the next item um, and really talk about it's lunchtime. And I know some of you that were in my class the last time, do you remember anything about Chipotle? And what time? Is it lunchtime? Yep. Yes, we moved off from sweets and treats to lunch, right? <laughs> so what jumps out at you with this Chipotle uh, image? It's all about the image, right? What jumps out? Tell me something. Like you're ready to grab it. You're ready to grab it, right? Or take a bite. You're hungry, right? Anything else? Hungry. That's it? A lot of food. Okay. Side story real quick. So yesterday I was in Reading. I went to the taco place, had a great taco salad. Um, talked to my husband on the phone. He's like, oh, Marcus, our son, just went to get Chipotle. So he had Chipotle for lunch, pretty much the same ingredients, you know, so we were chatting about it. Then I talked to my daughter last night. She said, oh, yeah, she's a nurse at Hershey. And she's like, um, yeah, I'm going to Chipotle. I'm like, <laughs> that was like a theme in the house. But anyway, just interesting. We were all thinking alike, right? Uh, so, side note. But let's get back to the image. Uh, so the point is, is that um, Chipotle um, realized that there was a need in the community. Is there a Chipotle in the area? Yes. Where? How far away? Give me the distance. Demographics. Yes. Like, uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes away? Okay. Anyone here like Chipotle? No. Like we got... You don't like it, and why don't you like it? I don't like all that rice. It's hard to digest. I don't like. I love rice, but okay, keep talking. <laughs> I don't like all that red stuff. Because the red stuff. You know, so it's probably the peppers or something in there. Okay, but you can get it. Build your own. Thank you very much. You can build it yourself. You know. She's like, no, she's not. All right, never mind. Okay. <laughs> we don't have a believer. Okay. Um, so the point is, is that. Um, with Chipotle, um, one of the things that they realize is that people are so busy today. They don't have time to um, make the homemade meals, you know, um, bake and cook and do all of that stuff. You know, that was done many, many years ago. So they wanted a solution for consumers that they can get their food quickly, healthy food, um, in, a, in a, you know, a timely manner. So that's why Chipotle identified um, a solution to their concept. So the opportunity, you know, people are busy, people want healthy alternatives, um, and of course the pricing, you know, needs to be reasonable, right? So they looked at the recent trends um, as far as food awareness, of the desire to have healthy and quality foods, um, and at a quick, fast pace. Uh, that's really important. Um, I know we have some um, homemakers in here, and I know we have some that uh, recently, you know, are changing. Uh, but as you know, I mean, as a mom, I know back in the day when my kids had to go to soccer and you name it, dance recite, you name it, um, I didn't have time, you know, so we had to do drive throughs Didn't really like doing that, but um, so Chipotle realized we need something different um, so people can get their food quickly. They can see their food being made. Um, Hibachi, any hibachi lovers in the room? Why do you like hibachi? They do the fire, right? Here. They do the fire. They do the fire, they have fun. They squirt the water. I wish I had a squirt water bottle. I should have had that, but anyway, okay. Um, what else do they do? Uh, that, the volcano. The volcano. I know, that's cool, right? Isn't that fun, right? A lot of fun. Yes. I'm there, I'm there. You got that image, right? It's not just preparing food. It's like, it's like it's a show. It's a show. It's a show, right? It's the ambiance, and it keeps you coming back, right? Um, one of the things that I personally like is they prepare the food right in front of you. That's important to me. I want to see what they're doing, what they're putting in my food. You talk about the red stuff. What is that red stuff? How are they chopping it up? What are they putting in there, right? So consumers want to see um, an opportunity for them to, you know, get things again quickly um, and at a reasonable price and all the other items that I mentioned. So you as a business owner really have to look at what is the value 
Um, so I mentioned just now on your business model canvas, right, the value proposition. So I'm going to stop at this moment, um, and I know you have a post-it note. So I want you to write down three things that you think or you should know is the value proposition of your company, okay? And let me just back up a minute. Question is, Keisha, what is value proposition, right? Yeah, so yeah there's plenty of post-its up here. What is value proposition before I kind of go back and review it? What is the value proposition for your cupcakes? The value proposition? Yes. The secret sauce. What is the secret to the backbone of your business? What is the value of, I'll give you an example. Um, we're going to move to another one. Chick-fil-A, right? What comes to mind when you think service. of Chick-fil-A? <coughs> service, customer service, right? So that's a value. To, that's a backbone, that's um, uh, an attribute to Chick-fil-A, right? What else? Increasing customer retention. Customer retention, right? So you have your current clients in there, and of course you want to bring in more people. Um, so let's just stop a minute, and can someone give me an example of the value proposition of your business? Now that I... Go ahead. Service. Customer service, okay, very important. But what makes sure it's so different than, you know, Chipotle versus KFC versus, you know, all the other restaurants that are out there? Go above and beyond. And how do you do that? Say please. Okay, that's nice. Those are the magic words, right? Is that Barney? Right? You guys remember that? Okay. What else? I would say just with the Chick fil A example, if you mm -hmm. want to pay seven or eight bucks, right, for a chicken sandwich, Yes. I don't know if there's a better, you know, in terms of the, the quality of the food, the quality of, you know, and again, everyone has to make their own decision mm -hmm. about what's healthy, but in terms of that fast food, I, I would say it's the quality of their chicken yep. and the taste mm -hmm. that sets them apart. Totally agree. So that could be the value proposition. Again, it's like a brainstorming session. So I just want you to start thinking about what makes your business different from your neighbor down the street, from a business 25 miles away, um, for a business in another state. Why should clients or customers come to your business? That's really what it's, it's about. The, it's, it's the presentation. Yeah. Like when they yep. walk in, is it friendly looking? And yes. Is the food uh, you know, attractive to you and mm -hmm. everything. So I think that that presentation when you walk in there is nice and bright and, you know. I agree. Thank the you. The atmosphere. The atmosphere, yes. Very. Uh, as my mother would say, it's a poor dog that doesn't wag its own tail. Now, you're, you're making reference to the value proposition. Uh, in intellectual property, we would identify that as how, uh, how a company or a vendor distinguishes itself in the market. And uh, because earlier when you had the magazine, mm -hmm. and this gentleman said $10, and the other gentleman said $1, mm -hmm. and actually either one of those numbers could have been correct, depending on who you are. If that's, you know, Oprah's magazine, as opposed to something you would get at the dollar store, then you would pay 10 or $1. Right. So it's really how you distinguish yourself in the market. Yes. Thank you so much, Mary. That is very important. And it really, a, a great point, because $10 versus $1, it all depends what you see as um, an added value or the importance to, you know, you talk about Oprah Magazine, People Magazine, you know, things like that. It's about the image. Um, think about it. It's so funny. My mother-in-law was in the grocery store the other day, and she picked up, what's it, People Magazine? Or what's the one that um, has a lot of gossip and stuff like that? Inquire. Mm -hmm. And my husband's like, Mom, why are you looking at that? But anyway, she, she bought it. I'm like, you go, Anna. You, you get your magazine. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that um, right there, that front cover, right? I think that's a great, you know, story. That tells you a lot about um, potential as far as what's inside of a magazine, what um, 
the business, you know, kind of behind it, what the story is. I mentioned about I have to go back to your T-shirt. You know, that tells a lot, you know, just seeing, you know, the sassy girl. Is it a woman or a girl, would you say? Girl. It's a girl, sassy girl with her kid. You know, she has attitude, but it's great, right? Because, you know, I'm interested. I want to know more about it. Um, one of the things that you should add to that, and I just, a side note, I, I tend to do that a lot, is one of those um, codes that, you know, if you use your phone, you can find out more about your business. QR. What, a QR, QR code. You might want to add. Yes, a QR code that on the back of your shirt, something like that. Then you have people like, uh, anyway, just saying. Um, but my point is, is that you have to distinguish yourself from the competition. Um, and not only that, once you distinguish yourself, you have to make sure that you're keeping up, okay? Not with the Kardashians, all right? But just keeping up and keeping that presence, you know. Chick-fil-A, going back to them, what else is so unique about Chick-fil-A? They focus on, uh, they focus on one thing, chicken, and they're very efficient. Yes. I didn't like their um, advertisements with the um, the cows yeah. that couldn't spell. I mean, as a teacher, I'm like, that just didn't work for me. That really drove me nuts. Yeah, they're changing that up a little problem. bit. I, I didn't like that. I just didn't like it. Okay? What else is unique about them? There's one thing that's... They're yes. Clothes they're clothes. Throw him a cupcake. No, throw him a cupcake. <laughs> they're clothes on Sundays, right? They very well could be open, right? But what is their belief? What is their mission? What is their value? Um, they're Christian. They're Christian based, right? Um, and they believe that um, their employees should be with their families, right? Yes, they could be open. They can make a ton of money, you know. I don't know how many times I tried to drive to a Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. I'm like, oh, they're closed. You know, I forgot. Um, but can you think of any other business that is not open on a Sunday? Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Interesting. Car dealership. Car dealership, but that's a matter of law. Car dealer. Yeah, trust me. Yeah, they're always out and about somehow. Emailing, you name it. All right, so the point is, you know, when you look at the value map, you're looking at um, what is the pain that you're relieving from uh, your potential, your client base, right? Um, how can I make things better for them? That's really what it's about. So with that being said, I'm going to pick on two people in the room and ask you what your value proposition. Now, I could just go around and see what you wrote. And actually, yes, and I'm just going to pick on you. Would you mind sharing your? <laughs> you're right here. So like, oh, great. I'll sit in the front again. <laughs> Yes, I was just thinking in the one um, would be newness. Newness? Newness, yeah, and convenience and performance. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. And of course you would need to elaborate on, you know, what, again, what you mean by that, um, how you're um, able to distinguish yourself in the market, right? Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I used to work as a uh, tour agency when, back in my country for 10 years as a tour guide. And then now coming here and now brainstorming and I'm thinking maybe you know, tourism might be a good idea. And so what happens is that lots of foreigners come to my country, it's Mongolia, a very new destination. And then, uh, you know, in Mongolia now everybody's thinking, okay, getting customers, you know, people uh, from outside and so just have business over there. But I'm here and then I'm seeing a little bit different perspective. And so now I'm thinking, People in Mongolia now uh, used to be called this country, now it's open and all the, the free uh, market is working and lots of people started to travel. And so the America is the biggest destination like any other country. Mm -hmm. and so lots of people want to come in here and then they don't know the language. And you know, right now we <coughs> don't have under searching as we don't have any business that let's say if Mongolians come and then they stay with their uh, family or friend or child, you know, but everybody who comes in the foreigners, they have to work. That's how they, you know, doesn't matter janitor, uh, taxi driver, and they don't have that luxury time to, and so that's why I'm thinking, maybe it's a new idea that if I open up, let's say, in different countries like New York, Washington, that's main, uh, you know, the uh, sports people come. Maybe I can contact some local, uh, Williams, mm -hmm. and they have cars, and maybe eventually if I set up, maybe I can have a uh, certain kind of, you know, the bus and the truck and uh, going around, and, uh, 
be able to tour. So that's why I thought it would be, maybe it's a new thing. Right. And it's permanent too, you know, the people right. come and the kids don't have to uh, take all the time. And uh, and so if I offer my business, I would have one guy, one more willing, and they will take them to the store and uh, tour. And so those people will see the short period of time. Right. And then it's accessible too. Right. I think that's a great idea. And um, what I would recommend. Um, is I'm sure you probably do research on it to try to find out, you know, if there's uh, something. Basic, you know, right okay, sure, sure. Incidents. But definitely getting market research on that to really find out, you know, um, is there a market for, you know, for that service? Um, so great idea. Thank you. Uh, one more person coming around the room. Anyone want to throw their hand up? Oh, I see. She's like, please don't be No eye No eye I get it, I get it. Would you like to share? No right what happens <laughs> well where was the nurse anybody see that commercial where she was at work and I guess there were two robbers at the door and she kind of said not up in here or something like this she said you know pretty much told them to get away um, but the ring is um, it's like a doorbell but it's a camera so you can actually see when people are coming to your front door now you can see it on your cell phone right yeah. yes Yes. Um, so I think the creator of the ring was on Shark Tank. I think that's my understanding. Plus, okay. Um, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. And here's why. Um, my son, him and the girlfriend come running in, right? So my husband can always tell when they come in, okay? Uh, so, um, but he, my husband loves it. But Marcus is like, well, and that dad, now dad's thinking about getting one in the back, you know? But it's a great product to have. And I'm not promoting products here, I'm just saying. Um, but again, I'm not sure the history behind it, um, but a lot of times, you know, there's a reason why individuals come up with a particular product. Um, and I just wanted to share that brain story with you real quick because I saw the cell phones and people are able to view what's going on in their homes even though, you know, they're here right now. So it started from packages being sold. Oh, the packages, yes, and that was a huge. Yeah. I can't believe how many lately just walk up like it was their package. It's like, really? You have a story on speaking, speaking of a grand business idea, yes. I saw a video, a video by this guy who created a, basically a robot package. And so he, he'd done this because his package had been stolen. So when the thief opened the package, it, it exploded with glitter all over their car. <laughs> and it had four cell phones in it, so it recorded from so did that go viral? And you, well, yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. That's so too that funny. The glitch of the call it the I, thought, I thought, wow, that sounds like a marketable idea. So we yes. Can buy that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and again, usually, and uh, it comes out of something that has occurred to someone, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try this. And one of the things, and I did say this early on, um, 
But you should never go into business just for the sake of money. If that's why you're going into business, I highly recommend that you don't. Um, really have a good reason to go into business, to solve a problem, to offer services. Talk about how you're going to make the money, of course. Um, yes? Just to add to that, I'm a patent attorney, and I drafted a patent for an individual, and uh, the United States Patent and Trademark Office initially denied it. They said, well, this doesn't work, so, 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 so. And the fact that I was able to tell them specifically how the inventor uh, had used it to overcome a need uh, was convincing. Uh, to them. So, yes, uh, relieving a need does sure. make a difference. It really does. Thank you so much. Um, I love real life stories, and that really helps um, to kind of paint the picture. Um, and you uh, mentioned a really big, um, how do you say, uh, concern. You know, we talk about patents. Um, and again, I'm not an attorney, so I can't really speak a lot about it. Um, but one of the things through Kutztown, uh, we actually partner with Penn State Legal Team, uh, and they help clients with, um, you know, with their patents, um, I guess trademarks, um, things like that. Uh, so it's really important, you know, that you consult with an attorney and an accountant early on in your business. You don't want to wait until you know, you're faced with a, a situation. And I believe last, um, do you remember the, the attorney that was here last? couple of sessions ago, Brian. How much did uh, he mention that it cost in the end? I think 20000 30. Was it 30000 versus how much would have cost in oh, the beginning? Like maximum yeah, maximum 30000 <coughs> But they came to him a little bit too late, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Always have a good accountant and a good attorney from the start. Yes, you know, they say you get what you pay for, but it's your business, right? You want to invest early and make sure that you're doing the right thing so you're not hit with that $30,000, you know, fee or um, um, that that particular client um, had to deal with. Back to Chipotle. We're going back to lunch, okay? I know some of you don't like Chipotle, but just saying. Mm -hmm. So their purpose was to meet a need, right, to, for people that wanted quality, healthy um, a meal in a timely manner um, and Chipotle you know of course wanted to charge you know a good fee um, and a fare so they looked at the industry and you know pulled in information from the Census Bureau um, did a lot of market research uh, talked about the trends and the changes in the industry um, and then talked about you know the industry um, that potentially is growing I think Solomon mentioned, um, I just want to say to the cake lady, I'm not going to, what is your first name? I'm sorry. Your first name? Tamika. Tamika. Yes. Um, about a serving, right? So just serving, you know, the group, everyone's tasted, tasted some of her treats, right? Um, so find out what's going on, you know, what do you like, what don't you like, make recommendations. Um, one of the things that I mentioned when I first saw them, I'm like, oh, I'm sure they're sugar free. You know, a lot of people go in gluten free now, you know, so things like that. So that may be something that if you don't have it, you may want to look into that. Um, so here's an example of the uh, industry forecast. So looking at uh, Chick-fil-A, they kind of looked at fast food and quick services from 2012 uh, to 2017. And this information was pulled from Dun & Bradstreet, DMV, uh, Hoover's report. Um, and this is some information, again, that Cookstown can help with as far as market research. Uh, so just kind of looking at the trends, you know, 2017, kind of across the board is looking at it's going to grow the food industry um, about uh, 4%. Uh, so now, marketing. Before I even go there, what do you think marketing is all about? Or what it used to be and what it is today? Yes? It's about branding now. Branding, yes. And you have a great logo. You have that brand, right? Has anyone thought about branding? Has anyone thought about a logo? Tell me a logo that comes to your mind as soon as I said logo. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. What is their logo? It's the Okay. Give me a logo. Pepsi. Pepsi Coke. Um, oh, she went there. She went there. Okay. Does everyone in the room know about visaprint.com where you can do free business cards or very low cost? Like, yeah. It's like $10. You pay $5 and you 
cost for shipping, yeah. Yes. So meetsuprint.com is low cost for free business cards and other materials. Yes, and I hear that advertised a lot because you get 500 business cards for like 10 bucks. Right. Yes. And there, there are also great uh, apps. There's, there's apps that can help you with uh, creating a logo, creating marketing material. Uh, one of those apps is Fiverr. F-I-B-E-R-R, that app can, uh, when you're thinking about logos, you're thinking about uh, branding, there are individuals on there that charge uh, nominal fees or, or maybe a, an exuberant amount, but they will help you uh, at least craft your idea. So definitely just take a look at, because uh, I know a lot of people use their phones and tablets now, they don't Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know about that one, so thank you. Yeah, for I might sharing. actually send the Fiverr and yes. the Beastprint.com and the, the follow-up on Monday because I've heard about it, but it's just on the website now. Perfect. Can I have one more logo that comes to your mind as soon as I said logos? Yes. Starbucks. Nike. Nike. Just do it. City of Harrisburg. City of Harrisburg. Right there. Uh, there's something in that logo. Thank you. So much. This is the. I'm a visual person, so let's. So the city of Harrisburg, what can you tell me about that logo? Yeah. You brought it up. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know, just teasing you. And then it talks about <coughs> incorporated, right, in 19... 18. Oh, March 19, 1860. Um, so what I would recommend when you... Another recommendation, that QR code, maybe you should have that incorporated up here. So if you're at an event, people want to know more about it. Who mentioned about the history of... Um, about how beautiful they're back in Harrisburg. I heard that. Ah, Kaylee. All right. <laughs> yeah. So um, you talked about the history, um, you know, of Harrisburg, and um, and I'm sure Solomon can probably tell us more about that as well, um, and others. Uh, so you know, it's really important to kind of know, you know, your surroundings um, and capitalize, you know, on the history. Um, and of course, you know, the resources, you know, in the city or wherever you may be located. Um, so thank you for having that up there. So marketing, what comes to mind when we market? When we go to market, we're going to go to market, we're going to sell our product. Sorry. How are we going to do that? Finding your specific. Finding Nemo? No. Finding your specific. I'm just using you. I just came to mind. Finding what? Your specific. Your specific market, right? Okay, what else? Online yeah, online. internet. And what tools are you going to use? What platforms are you going to use? Social media. Social media is a big word, right? So, what exactly in social media are you going to use? Facebook. Facebook Marketplace. I showed a guy at a meeting in Reading yesterday. The guy was like, oh, he's been in a the city for many, many years, and I didn't know anything about uh, Facebook Marketplace. I'm like, who's your competition? We talked about a few. We went to Facebook Marketplace. We typed in um, his kind of industry. All of these came up here. He was like, he just loved it. So he was, his assignment was to go about get himself on Facebook Marketplace because that's a free uh, resource that he can use to promote his business. What else? What's the biggest platform that people are using uh, to talk about their business? Twitter, blog, area, what else? LinkedIn? Yeah. YouTube. Who said it? Who gets a prize? Who gets a prize? Throw a prize. YouTube. YouTube is all over the place, right? Um, you can learn so much. Um, there was that company that had you get a little prize inside, um, and the marketing director was talking about they pretty much scrapped their complete marketing plan, and they did YouTube videos. So that was their avenue, and they sold so much money, right? Or so much um, of their business, um, you know, by using YouTube as a resource. Speaking of that, um, and I want to bring up another company, um, the giant of um, online business. Amazon. Amazon. We all know Amazon, right? Do we use Amazon? And before that was eBay. Thank you. Before that was eBay, and eBay's still there, right? Not as um, 
you know, not as the giant as Amazon is, but the point is, is that it's still there. Um, yes, I would say, right? And then of course Walmart's out there, you know, doing a little bit more. Um, so let's look at the external environment. So Chipotle, consumers ages 25 to 54, um, within a 10 mile radius. Um, and again, try to figure out where you're going to put your business. Is it going to be downtown Harrisburg? Is it going to be on the outside of it? Um, looking at commuting workers, commercial businesses in Berks County. Um, so not only looking at the consumer, also looking at um, B2B, so partnering with businesses you know, that are, um, could possibly use your service as well would be a great option. Um, so looking at the actual numbers um, as far as employees in Berks County, so looking at why you're missing Leesport, um, let's see, Boyertown. So these are the number of businesses according to the uh, market research that was done. Um, and in this case, in Reading, 745. But then drilling down more to see, okay, who's in the restaurant business? Um, and so looking at the other pieces, the competition. Now before I show my big slide up there, as far as the competition, the question is, who is Chipotle's competition? Moe's. Who, who said that? Now, you were in my last session. Now, why do I? Thank you. It's all right. It's okay. It's, it's all good. I'll let that go. Southwest? Southwest. I was going to say Southwest. No, that's Southwest. airlines. Okay, Subway. Got it, got it. Who? Qdoba. Qdoba? Okay. I've never eaten there. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Taco Bell. Taco Bell? Keisha, I'm talking about any, if you have money for lunch, isn't it any food vendor is competing for those same $10? How many lunch, you're probably only going to buy one lunch today or tomorrow, which means anyone that sells food wants that $10. So really, I'm saying your competition's only in Mexican type, fiesta, taco type thing, isn't realistic. It could be anything, right? That's true. So which box is it on this one that they're going to list? Anyone else that's competing for the same dollars, right? Yes. If you only have an entertainment budget, That's true. Which box is that one? Oh, which box? Yeah. She knows I don't know. All right, so when you, sorry. So you're really just kind of looking at, again, your, um, you can look at a couple of these, your customer segments, are you looking internally? You're also looking at, at a partner. Um, so again, I kind of listed in under the value proposition and looking at, as far as, I would say, customer segments in a way. So kind of looking at, you know, who is your competition that's out there? And we just usually put a top, put a note, because there's actually a slide um, that focuses on, you know, who your competition is. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question. So, I heard Cordova, I heard a couple of other places, right? Um, let's find the slide. But before we even get there, um, you really should know your competition, and you should know um, as far as the story behind the competition. Um, so here we go. Someone said Moe's, right? You said Moe's. Have you eaten at Moe's? Oh, that's right. You no, did I say Moe's. Yeah, I've eaten at Do you like Moe's? Yeah. I don't like Moe's. I think I told my story last time. And here's why. I walked into Moe's at probably 1 o'clock. I think you probably heard this from the last time. Um, the food was like, it was like sitting there. It looked like it's been sitting there. And then I ate it, and it sat in my stomach, so it was sitting there. So my point is, is that the appearance was lousy, so the presentation wasn't that great. And then once I ate it, it was really bad. Uh, so since then, I have not been back to a Moe's, okay? Um, when you look at the others up here, Panera, I love Panera bread. What can you tell me about Panera up there as far as their logo? Fresh. Fresh? What else? Busy. Busy all the time. Anything else? Do you see a logo up there? What do you see? What's going on up there? There's a lady. I never knew that. I went to Panera's all the time. There's a lady in there. Um, now, Panera started in St. Louis, I'm not sure of the year, um, but it used to be uh, St. Louis Bread Company. And um, when they realized, okay, we're doing great here, but we want to expand, um, they expanded. But they knew they couldn't call it St. Louis Bread Company because it wouldn't have the same effect or impact 
um, as opposed to, um, you know, of course, going outside of the, the city itself or going outside the state. So they call it Panera Bread. Um, and then we have Zoop. Um, anyone eat at Zoop? Anyone hear of Zoop? Zoop is located right in a couple of places. So basically they have, oh my gosh, I'm going to say a hundred different types of soups um, on a daily basis. It's amazing, right? Um, and the one day I think it was like a pepper steak soup that I had, it was really good. Um, but it's just like a Panera, just a variety of soups that they have. I would choose Panera over Zoop, but you know, it really all depends on, uh, you know, what you like. So you look at fast food quality, ambiance, um, the health and freshness, um, real quick story on Panera, um, I try to watch my salt intake and they had some type of uh, chicken with noodles in it. It looked really good um, and I asked the girl, uh, is it real salty? She had a book. She went to the book and she's like, oh, you don't want that. And she showed me how much sodium was in there, which was great. Uh, so a lot of times companies are uh, health conscious and they realize, you know, that they have to uh, disclose the information. Um, do you remember when McDonald's kind of changed their menu as far as putting, as far as the calories or uh, information on that? Were you surprised by that? Did you notice that? I thought McDonald's food really is good for you. Is it, is it good for you? My brother says it is. It is not good for Well, I'm not going to. Okay. Their french fries are good when they're really hot. Um, oh, golden, oh. Linda just talked about the yeah. golden arches. Um, but my point is, they had to disclose um, how many calories, you know, um, uh, is actually in the food. So that's really important to know. They, they had to disclose macronutrients too, so not just not just the number of calories, but the drinks. But the, the ones macronutrients, how much protein? Oh, okay. I didn't know that because I guess I didn't really get that. So hold on, we got a phone going off in the back. That was cute. No, no worries. <laughs> I sort of give them a hard time. And here we have it. Here's the business model canvas. We just talked about it, right? So let's just pick one. Someone pick one of these off of the um, off of the model. And Linda, how much time do I have? Um, it's about 20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
um, the daily operations. I know you mentioned you want to bring um, open another business, right? So you may want to outsource the human resource piece or your payroll part. Um, I worked for ADP for 10 years, so I partner with a lot of um, um, companies and we outsource, they outsource to ADP to manage their, um, their human capital management. So their employees, their human resources, um, some of the training, um, so things like that. So knowing what the key resources are um, as far as the backbone to your business. And it makes sense sometimes to outsource it as opposed to trying to do everything yourself. Make sense? Linda? So this is just an example of, um, you know, the business model canvas. Now this is talking about um, key partners, a machine, a manufacturer. So who am I going to get? Do I need to bring in, um, you know, an espresso machine or, you know, when we talk about Starbucks? Um, do we have to train our baristas who have to know about, is it 80 different types of drinks to make? Um, did you hear about that? I couldn't believe that. It's a lot of drinks that they need to know how to make them. Like, really? That's why there's a duck in, um, because I go and I get my decaf um, coffee with cream and sugar, and uh, it's simple, and they make it right, usually. So then, of course, talk about the sales approach. How are you going to reach those customers, right? How are you going to get out there? Um, are you going to have a sales team? Are you going to be out there yourself trying to push your product? Um, so those are the inner workings that you need to think about. Um, as you are working through your business plan. And again, we talked about social media, so I'm going to zoom on to the next thing. Um, there's a lot to social media, and um, there's a separate session that we actually do as far as um, social media um, webinars that we do. So if you're interested, feel free to jump on, on one of the webinars to really learn more about it. Uh, the inner working, so really looking at um, the people, the organizational structure, and how are you going to, what type of environment is your business going to be in, okay? So knowing the daily operations is really key. Going back to Chipotle, they decided they located, located theirs in uh, Reading, uh, 2733 Paper Mill Road, because there wasn't one at that point in time there. The one that they're referring to, there's a zoo in the area. Um, there's not a Moe's um, in that area. Um, they prepare the food right in front of you. That may be very important. Um, I know it is for me. Uh, so again, the daily operations, the manager, the assistant manager, the staff, it all depends how your business is running. Um, and again, these are just things to consider. When you're looking to set up a business, um, and one of the things that I learned very quickly when I worked in Coatesville, um, I did training about two years ago, uh, one of the biggest questions that entrepreneurs wanted to know is zoning regulations. Didn't realize it was a big concern, so I actually had the city manager, Mike, he came out um, and presented um, to the group to help them better understand what they can, they couldn't do. And I didn't realize, um, but as far as signage, um, they couldn't put like a big sign out front and just uh, very interesting items. Uh, so anyway, I learned a lot in that session. Um, the growth plan, again, having a short and long-term plan is really important, um, and just flushing that out. Um, I think I heard a feasibility report, uh, we talked about that a little bit, um, and Linda's going to send that information out to you, um, but that's really important. We actually have entrepreneurs and businesses that come to us to ask, does it make sense, you know, uh, you know with the feasibility report? Um, so. We are not uh, able to kind of give advice on it. We'll look at the report and give some tips, but that's pretty much as far as what, what we can do. And then again, talking about the next steps, you know, what are you going to do within the next 90 days? What is your call to action? What is your plan um, in order to launch your business? Um, so getting that all together, and then of course looking at your short, your long-term plans, you know, in the next two to three years. The financials, it's not here, oh, but that's okay. It's just important to know what your one-time cost is versus your ongoing costs, your essential versus your optional. Now this gets, how can I say, um, complicated sometimes because you know, you're looking at a lot of numbers um, and you're looking at what's required for me as a startup and then 
um, your fix versus your variable cost and how you can incorporate all of that information in your financial projections. This is just a snapshot. There's so much more. Um, so one of the things that we do, I'm working with a client um, based in Easton, Pennsylvania, that needs help with adding additional, I want to say, 60000 um, so we're working on the financial piece. She already invested 300 or 500,000, something like that. Just needs a little bit more for, um, you know, expanding her business. So I'm working with her on the business model as far as um, her projections and how she's going to present that to the bank. Um, so again, looking at all of the expenses, the taxes, the telephone, again, those are the fixed expenses. Um, does she need any commercial property? Um, is she going to rent out the property? Things like that. And I'm going fast because I want to get to the questions. Um, so again, we help out with that. And then you talk about sales forecasts. Now we talked about the book, right? And what was the amount that we talked about this book is going to cost? Ten dollars, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to cost four dollars to make it. So there's a six dollar margin, right? So on this tab. You can go in up to 12 different products and put in um, your overall cost versus your retail versus how much it costs you to make the product. And just doing uh, projections on that, um, can we sit down and help you with that piece. Then, of course, we look at the financial information, um, you know, the two parts, the balance sheet, the income statement. Um, so we work with you with that as well. And that's it. So now it's time for questions. And before I ask questions, well, it's kind of part of a question as well. Was there something else that you had in your mind or expected to see that you didn't see or hear so far? Don't be shy. No? Questions? Yes. Going back to this I know that they did market research there, but when they, I guess they determined that they're going to franchise in Reading, that they, do you specifically, in that case, conclude not to be anywhere near Panera or can near, you, or is it okay to go near Panera understanding that the same when they switch back and forth? Right. Um, like, how do you Yeah, sort really, that? No, we don't give input that way, but. Um, you know, based on the market research, um, it will give you the kind of um, the findings as far as, you know, if there's a Panera within two miles or, you know, a Bose or a Zoo, you know, so it doesn't come back and say, we recommend you not go in here. Um, we're just gathering the information for you so that you can make that decision if it makes sense, you know, um, for you to actually go in that particular location. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I did a common location, and this is dated, but you can make it current. So back in the day, no matter what your business was, my background is Subway franchising. Oh, yes. Back in the day, your location, no matter what your business was, even a food business, they said put it next to a McDonald's. It doesn't matter that you're competing. The sheer volume of traffic going to a McDonald's, you will get some business, right? So this is the difference between being on a side road with nobody. I would say you would argue that differently now. You might say... Now you put your business next to a Costco or a Walmart, right? One of the two biggest, probably, retailers getting traffic. You may be being next to those two. I'm not quite sure. McDonald's is still the standard since there's so much more fast food out there. But you know, really, the basic question is where's traffic, right? How are you going to drive people into your business? That's true. Good point. Thank you. And Linda also mentioned something about franchise. Anyone thinking about a franchise or? Okay. One of the things I mentioned, what, what are, who are the two people that I said you should consult with prior to your business? Attorney. An attorney and account. Very good. Great students. I really appreciate you. <laughs> uh, but my point is, is that's really important. So if you're considering a franchise, please consult with um, an attorney before you do that. We had a client um, in Chester County that came to us uh, probably a year or two after he signed this franchise agreement, pretty much locked in, um, gave thousands of dollars um, and just trying to get out of it. But there's a lot of um, kind of fine print as far as marketing, advertising, what you can, can't do. So uh, just use caution, you know, when you're franchising. And I definitely will consult with an attorney prior to. Okay? Um, 
Yes. I was just going to say, it's another good case study for marketing, branding, and location is Marriott Corporation. They tend to locate near hospitals. And as a result, you get a, a kind of a follow-on of food establishments, etc. People with disposable income uh, that will be spending money. So I've gone to some of the ownership meetings at uh, Marriott, and that's, that's a good case study to take a look at. Thank if you're near Marriott, you're probably in good shape in terms of retail and food establishments. Very good. And I, I appreciate you mentioning that. Uh, mentioning that um, in the city of Coatesville, they're doing a lot of revitalization, um, and the Marriott is one of the key places. And I meet with quite a few investors and clients that are interested in starting their business. Um, so that's interesting because they are kind of looking over, you know, and in the Marriott, you know, area because there's only one major one over there. Um, and then the other, on another note. Um, um, you may want to look at tax credits. Um, that may be um, an area or a way that you can kind of help fund your business. Don't want to get into too much of that because I don't know enough about it. Um, but um, just consider that. You know, it may be in a certain zone. Um, anyone know? I keep, are there certain uh, zones? Like yeah, Keystone? there are. There are uh, it's called KLT. There are yes. Keystone Opportunity yep. Zones. Uh, federal government just released the uh, Opportunity Zone for okay. construction. And uh, the city also has a program for uh, revitalization, new okay. construction. Yep. It's uh, LERD, which is the Local Economic uh, Revitalization Tax uh, Act. And so part of that is uh, to kind of spur some development uh, in the city. And uh, with that program, um, which I'm also um, in charge of, is it negates or abates your taxes on what you're renovating. So what your current uh, assessed value is for your taxes is what you would pay. Uh, but if you came in and did a substantial renovation, uh, substantial uh, would mean like an addition, adding a bathroom, uh, but something that's substantial as far as a renovation, uh, that part of it, uh, once it's reassessed, that's the amount that would be abated. It wouldn't negate all of your taxes, but uh, it would abate the taxes on that new uh, portion that you put on. So there are some programs that are out here. I think it's just important to look at your specific area. Uh, Solomon, if you're, if you're a smaller company and try to glean that information, I know there's some, some analytic companies that kind of gather all of that for a bigger uh, organization. But if you're smaller trying to get that information, where would you go you know, to kind of, kind of get some of that information to help you out to put your business no, so well, so for, for hotels, for that industry, and I, I always emphasize hotels because they do a tremendous amount of research before a Spring Hill Suites <coughs> Fairfield Inn goes in, but you know that it's been extensive. So uh, it slips my mind right now, but there are associations, I don't know if you know Linda, but that has that information. Some of it you have to pay for, yeah. and some of it's available. Uh, that might be you know, available for free. So if you're interested, let me know and I'll follow up with you with an email uh, to some of the organizations that have some of this data. Yeah, yeah. I know there's some companies out there that they do charge a, a substantial amount uh, as far as getting that information. Some of it's pulled from the census, uh, but it's, it's more or less consumer information that you can put around your products and services to kind of target your uh, specific market. I would say your place to start. Every county has an economic development court. The thing is, the type of funding or tax credits we're talking about are for someone that is going to be doing a brick and mortar business in that municipality. So you start with the municipality, which would be City of Harrisburg here, or whatever it is in Campbell, I don't know, over the river. But each the municipality and each economic development court or the chamber, I would say check with all three. And it's constantly changing. So you want to be in constant communication with those. I'm doing an addition or I'm spending this money in your region. You know, what benefits are there to me putting my business in your region? Um, so that's the bigger picture. But I think we're talking about a lot of virtual businesses in the room. And then we're, you know, that, these are tax credits after you've spent a lot of money. Um, I do have some legitimate state and federal grant sites. Um, normally those are for nonprofit businesses, not for a for-profit where you're trying to just make money. So, but I can have you review those and send you legitimate lists. Don't click on anything that says, you know, free grants to start out my business. That's always a scam. If that was true, I'd give them to you, but I can't send you legitimate sites to look. 
Okay, so you go over. Can you go over the revenue streams on this chart here? Sure. Because it's funny. Know, I was actually. There are people that how do they know what price to charge someone when mm -hmm. you're in the, when you're in the market like that? Well, that's a perfect question because I was going to pull up um, the business model canvas. So then, of course, looking at, you know, how would they prefer to pay? So just looking at all the details behind it. That's actually on here. You probably can't read it, but I can get that out to you so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, does that help a little bit? Okay. Any other questions? So the only other item that I wanted to share with you is in the Small Business Association book on page 26 and 27. Um, it's a really good uh, summary as far as how to write your business plan. Um, and again, we're not going to leave you hanging like, here you go, good luck. Um, we're here to support you and to help you. So, you know, really the next steps are to, um, if you're not signed up as um, a Kutztown Small Business Development Center client, um, please go to our website and sign up. Um, we will set up um, a one-on-one -on -one with you uh, to sit down and go through with you um, as far as your business plan, um, what your next steps are, social media marketing. So you need to let us know how we can help you. Um, so again, use all of the free tools that are available. There are a lot. Um, and so again, we're here to help you. Um, so Charlie, anything else? Um, yeah, there, just a couple of uh, individuals came in. Here, Ken, uh, I mean, if you can introduce yourself and let everybody know what yes. you do. Hi, I'm Lane Sanhamaker. I work with an organization called Community First Fund. Um, and we're a, what we are is we're a nonprofit, kind of a more of a mission-based uh, financial institution. So we're not a bank. We don't take deposits or work with 
treasury management or credit card, you still need to have a strong banking relationship like with FNB for those. Um, but there are times when we're able to get loans approved, especially startups, things that are maybe a little bit riskier in nature, where the banks, because of all the additional regulators and stuff that they have kind of overseeing what they can and can't do, our approval structure will allow them to be a little bit more flexible. So oftentimes we can maybe do the loan that, that they're unable to do. You still, like I said, you still need to have a banking relationship um, for the rest of that, but we can do that business loan potentially. Uh, we work a lot within low-income communities as well as we have an emphasis where we assist um, people of color as well as women in businesses. So uh, again, it's kind of a little bit of a, a niche market. We're not a, we're not a bank. We're a, what's called a CDFI. Um, so like I said, it's a little bit less regulated and uh, we'd like to work with a lot of businesses and work with, with Charlie and the city often to try and help businesses, especially here in Harrisburg. I cover Cumberland, Dauphin, Franklin, and Perry counties, but actually our, our company goes all the way east to Philadelphia and North Allentown, so there's 15 counties. It just wouldn't necessarily be me if you're in one of those markets, but I'd be able to make the introduction as to who that lender would be to, to assist. So what I usually recommend is you go to your bank, you go to your FNB first, if they're unable to do it, then they refer it and say, hey, we can't do it, but maybe can a community first fund might be able to do that with, you know, a 10% down instead of 20% or a little bit less collateral, things along those lines. So uh, there are some business cards and little, little flyers back there, and I'm going to stick around. So if you have any questions you want to talk, um, let me know. Uh, that's what we're here for. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. And uh, Ms. Dobb, introduce yourself. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shashawn Dial. By day, I serve as the Director of Equity and Affirmative Action for the City of Harrisburg, which means I'm blessed to work with this phenomenal king, Mr. Charlie White. Uh, so, and then I'm also an entrepreneur myself, so I'm the founder of Boisterous Media LLC. And we can talk about that offline. And welcome to Dixon University. I'm a PhD student as well, so this is my home campus. So I encourage you, if you know people interested in higher ed, Check it out. There's like nine different institutions that use this as a satellite site. So free infomercials for all those organizations that I'm connected to. But by day, as the Director of Equity and Affirmative Action, I work to update the city's policies. I work with Charlie on certified disadvantaged businesses, so making sure that we get the word out about minority, women-owned, LGBTQ-owned, disabled-owned, veteran-owned, all of those businesses. And in addition, I'm the staff liaison to the reinstated Harrisburg Human Relations Commission. So many people may be familiar with the statewide organization, which is the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission. Uh, they have a Philadelphia branch, a Pittsburgh branch, and their Harrisburg branch is 333 Market Street. So they take discrimination claims across the entire state. The city of Harrisburg felt it was important that we invest just for city residents. So if someone feels like they have experienced discrimination in employment, public accommodations, education, or housing, and they live or work in the city proper, Harrisburg City proper, they can file with the Harrisburg Human Relations Commission. And so that comes to me and the incredible nine individuals who serve as commissioners who I get to work with. So those are just some of the things I do, but more importantly, I'm just another voice to say welcome, go get it, get it done, believe in yourself, and multiple streams of income is the way to get to wealth. So congratulations on being here. It's a wonderful way to end right here. <laughs> But I appreciate everybody coming today. Uh, hopefully we'll pick up, no, no, we will pick up here in, in the month of April. Uh, again, it's going to go, and we're going to go into more topics, uh, get a little bit more in depth, and, and some of the things that we're discussing. So uh, please, just be on the lookout for it. Uh, take this time now and, and kind of network amongst yourselves. And we'll be here in the room probably for the next 15 to 20 minutes. And thank you, everybody, for coming.